Hello dear students, here we discuss about conductometric titration under instrumental methods of analysis. What do we mean by conductometric titration? A conductometric titration is the one where we find out the end point of a titration by observing the change in specific conductance during the course of titration. That is what we call as conductometric titration. So I repeat once again. A conductometric titration is the one where a neutralization point or the end point of an acid based titration or in, norm, in normal titration by observing the change in specific conductance during the course of titration is what we call as conductometric titration. If it is so, what do we mean by specific conductance? A specific conductance is nothing but conductance of unit volume of the electrolytic solution. Specific conductance is nothing but the conductance of unit volume of the electrolytic solution. And specific conductance is indicated by the letter K and K is given by the formula or the relationship or we can calculate K by using the relationship K is equal to 1 by R into L by A where R is the resistance of the medium or, or of the solution and L by A is the cell constant. L by A is the cell constant and R is the resistance of the medium or the solution. And all of us know that conductance of any solution, conductance of any solution or even the specific conductance of, of any solution is mainly due to the movement of the ions in the solution. The, in the, the solution contains ions and the ions movement is responsible for the conductance of the solution. And all of us know that it is we are talking about electrolytic solution. An electrolytic solution or an electrolyte is the one which shows conductivity due to the movement of the ions. Whereas elect, when we talk about electronic conductance, there the conductance is due to the movement of the electrons. Whereas in the case of electrolytes or electrolytic solutions, the conductance is mainly due to the or only due to the movement of the free ions. And the therefore, the conductance of any solution, some solutions may show more conductance, some solution may show less conductance and the conductance of any solution is depending upon how many ions, of, how many ions which are present in the solution, how many ions are present in the solution and what is the mobility of each type of the ions. How many ions are present? More is the number of ions, generally more is the conductivity and more is the mobility of the ions, more is the conductivity. Therefore, conductance of any solution is mainly dependent upon the number of ions present and mobility of each type of the ion. So, therefore, overall the conductometric titration is the one where we find out the end point of a titration by observing the change in specific conductance during the course of titration. Specific conductance is nothing but the conductance of unit volume of the electrolytic solution and the specific conductance K is given by K is equal to L by A into 1 by R where R is the resistance, L by A is the cell constant and conductance or specific conductance in general is dependent upon the existence of free ions in the solution and the extent of conductance. The point is for any solution to show some conductance there must be presence of free ions and the extent of conductance whether the conductance is more or higher or lower it is depending upon the number of ions present and also it is depending upon the mobility of each type of the ion. And the mobility of the ion depends depending upon its size generally smaller is the size more is the mobility and higher will be its conductivity. So, smaller ions for example, H plus ions whenever H plus ions are present in any solution they, they show higher conductivity because H plus ions are smaller in size being smaller they are highly mobile being highly mobile they show high conductivity. So, therefore, the conductance of any solution is depending upon the number of ions as well as mobility of the ions. To have more mobility, the ions must be smaller. Therefore, smaller sized ions will be showing more mobility thereby more conductivity. And the specific conductance as all of us know is nothing but the conductance of unit volume of the solution. And in order to measure the specific conductance of any solution, any electrolytic solution, we take the help of an instrument called as conductivity cell. The conductivity cell 
is consisting of two platinum electrodes. Surface area of each platinum electrode is one centimeter square, and the uh, one centimeter square, and the distance between those two electrodes is one centimeter. So, in order to measure the specific conductance of any electrolytic solution, we take the help of uh, instrument called as or an electrode called as conductivity cell. This conductivity cell will be consisting of two platinum electrodes at the bottom and the surface area of each platinum electrode is 1 centimeter square and the distance between those two platinum electrodes is 1 centimeter. Therefore, whenever we dip this conductivity cell in any electrolytic solution between those two platinum electrodes, there will be a presence of 1 centimeter cube of the electrolytic solution because the surface area of each electrode is 1 centimeter square and the distance between those two electrodes is 1 centimeter. Therefore, between those two electrodes, there is a total area, total volume of 1 centimeter cube. So, therefore, whenever you dip this conductivity cell in any electrolytic solution between those two electrodes, there will be a presence of 1 centimeter cube of the electrolytic solution or unit volume of the electrolytic solution. So, that means, in a, suppose in a beaker you have taken 100 ml of 100 cm cube of some electrolytic solution. Into that you are dipping the conductivity cell. Though the beaker containing 100 cm cube of the electrolytic solution, between these two platinum electrodes of the conductivity cell, there will be a presence of only 1, 1 centimeter cube of the electrolytic solution. Therefore, these two electrodes together will detect the conductance of only that 1 centimeter cube of the electrolytic solution. Therefore, it helps in detecting specific conductance of the electrolytic solution. So, therefore, the conductivity cell is the one which is the electrode which helps us to find out the specific conductance of any electrolytic solution. Therefore, uh, whenever we try to find out the specific conductance of any electrolytic solution, we take this kind of the conductivity cell, dip it into the electrolytic solution. This conductivity cell will detect the specific conductance or will detect the conductance of unit volume of the electrolyte that is specific conductance and send the signals to the conductivity cell. And the conductivity cell will be showing the conductance of that or specific conductance of that solution in the digital form. So, uh, therefore, the, this is how a conductivity cell works and another principle behind the carrying out of conductivity titration is whenever we carry out conductivity titration, what happens is some of the ions, some kind of the ions will be replaced by different kind of the ions. Every ion will be having its own set of conductivity, its own level of conductivity, right? When you carry out conductivity titration or when you carry out titration, what happens? The ions having one set of conductivity, one level of conductivity will be replaced by some other ions having different level of conductivity. Thereby what happens? Gradually, when you are carrying out the conductometric titration, conductance will be keep on changing. Specific conductance of the solution will be keep on changing because when you carry out the titration, the ions of certain conductivity will be replaced by ions of some other conductivity. Naturally, when you carry out titration, therefore, there will be a change in conductance. And the end point of the titration is found out graphically by plotting conductance against volume of the titrant. So, what we do? We keep on adding certain amount of, a certain fixed amount of the solution from the burette every time, okay? And into the beaker containing some other reaction mixture, some other reaction mixture, some other chemical species. So, when we do so, gradually conductance changes because when you keep on adding solution from the burette into the beaker, what happens? The ions of certain conductivity will, will be replaced by ions of some other conductivity, thereby there will be change in conductance throughout the course of the titration by plotting the change in conductance versus volume of the right train, we can find out the concentration of the given species in the chemical solution. So, this is what is the basic principle behind the conductance of uh, uh, conductance of conductometric titration. So, now coming to the instrument, the instrument here we take the burette, here is the beaker, in the beaker burette we take the standard solution and in the beaker we take the analyte solution okay? and into the beaker we dip the conductivity cell. What this conductivity cell will do? This conductivity cell is connected to 
another device called as conductivity meter. This conductivity cell as we already discussed, it will detect the specific conductance of the solution and it sends the electrical signals to the conductivity meter and the conductivity meter and the conductivity meter will be converting the electrical signals into digital signals. Finally, specific conductance of this solution will be displayed in the digital form. So, this is how the conductivity meter or which we are using for carrying out conductometry titration works in general. So, the change in specific conductance during the titration is measured using conductivity cell connected to a device used for measuring the conductivity which is called as conductivity meter. So, overall as I explained you already the in a, bu in a burette we are going to take the titrant a standard solution. In the beaker we are going to take the solution whose concentration we have to find out. Into the solution taken in the beaker we are going to dip the conductivity cell. This conductivity cell will detect the specific conductance of this solution and this after detecting the specific conductance, it sends this as, uh, it sends the detection, whatever it is detected, that's it will be in the form of electrical signals, it is it will be sending it to the conductivity meter. In the conductivity meter, the electrical signals will be converted into digital signals. Finally, the conducted specific conductance of this solution is shown in the digital form. So, this is how the conductivity cell works in general. Conductivity cell or the conductivity meter works in general while carrying out conductometric titration. When you keep on adding the solution from the burette into the beaker, some of the ions, ions present in the beaker solution having their own conductivity will be replaced by some other ions having different conductivity thereby specific conductance will be keep on changing and the change in specific conductance is shown in the conductivity meter in the digital form. So, this is how a conductivity cell or the conductivity meter overall works in general while carrying out conductometric titrations. So, what are all the applications then? What we have understood as of now? What is a conductometric titration? And in that conductometric titration, we refer to what is called a specific conductance. So, therefore, what is specific conductance we try to understand? Then we try to understand uh, why uh, why the uh, why there is how there is a conductance uh, shown by or what are all the things that is free ions are responsible for conductance of electrolytic solution and what are all the things which are deciding the conductance level of any electrolytic solution like number of ions mobility of the ions then we try to understand how conductivity cell works what is the role of conductivity cell what is the role of conductivity meter, how conductivity cell and conductivity meter together will help us to find out the specific conductance of any solution at any given, given point of time during the titration thereby how it helps us to carry out the conductometric titration we understood. Now, we go through the applications of conductometric titrations. See applications mainly by using conductometric titration, we can estimate very weak acids or even very weak bases. Generally for weak acids and weak bases titration, weak acid versus strong base, strong acid versus weak base titration, we do not find suitable indicator. In that case, we can go for conductometric titration method. Then we can also use this method for estimating the mixture of weak acid and strong acid. So, weak acids and strong acid. For example, when we get a mixture of HCl versus acetic acid, we are going to discuss in, in the coming time in this session only. When we try to estimate the mixture of weak acid and strong acid, that kind of estimation that is you are given with a mixture of suppose acetic acid and HCl and you, you have to find out the concentration of acetic acid and concentration of HCl. That identification that uh, detection is not possible by using normal titration method. Whereas, in conductometric method, it is very much easily 
calculated and accurately can be calculated. Therefore, conductometric titration can be used in the case of very weak acids and bases where there are no indicators available. It can also be used to estimate the mixtures of weak acids and strong base, strong acids. And it is also used to estimate the concentration of colored and turbid solutions. Whenever some chemical solution is colored, some chemical solution is turbid, it is not possible for us to uh, estimate those solutions, estimate the concentration of those solutions by using normal titration method, by using any suitable indicator. In that case also, we can go for conductometric titration method. And uh, the another advantage of this method is, this by using this conductometric titration method, we can estimate even the dilute solutions. Usually in normal titration method, in normal volumetric titration technique, dilute solutions measurement is not that accurate, is not that accurate. Whereas, in conductometric titration method, we can estimate even the very dilute solutions. These are the few applications of conductometric estimation or conductometric titration. So, as of now, what we try to understand? We understood what is a conductometric titration, okay? What is the, what are all the reasons for conductance? Uh, of any electrolytic solution, what is specific conductance and what are all the factors upon which conductance of an electrolytic solution is dependent and how we carry out conductometric titration by using the conductivity cell as well as conductometer uh, instrument and how the conductivity cell detects the specific conductance and we also gone through the applications of conductometric titration. So, now we go through certain specific examples of carrying out conductometric titration. One of the example we start with is conductometric titration of strong acid with a strong base. Conductometric titration of strong acid with a strong base or conductometric titration of strong acid versus strong base. In this case, what we do is, in this case what we do is, you know, uh, in this case, you fill the burette with sodium, strong acid versus strong base, we take the example of HCl versus NaOH. HCl is a strong base, HCl is a strong acid, NaOH is also a strong base. And in this place, what we do is, we fill the burette with NaOH solution, NaOH solution of known concentration, we take standard solution of NaOH, we fill the burette with NaOH solution and you pipette out 50 ml of HCl into a beaker, 50 ml of HCl into a beaker, HCl concentration is not known to us. We have to find out the concentration of HCl by carrying out conductometric titration. So, what we do? Fill the burette with stand, standard solution of NaOH and pipette out 50 ml of HCl solution into a beaker. And into that beaker, you dip the conductivity cell and you switch on the conductivity meter the moment you do so, the conductivity meter will show the conductance of the, will show the conductance. Conductance means specific conductance, will show the specific conductance of HCl solution. Note it down. Suppose let it say, let us say the specific conductance of HCl solution shown as around 18 Siemens per meter. The unit of specific conductance is Siemens per meter. Suppose let us say the moment you dip the conductivity cell into the solution containing HCl, the machine, conductivity meter machine shows the conductance as 18 Siemens per meter. You note it down. Then what you do? You keep on adding 0.5 ml NaOH into HCl taken in the beaker each time. You add 0.5 ml of NaOH into the HCl taken in the beaker stir the reaction mixture and note down the change in conductance. So, what happens is when you add NaOH into the beaker containing HCl, into the beaker containing HCl, what happens is NaOH neutralizes HCl forming NaCl along with H2O, along, along with H2O. It is also shown here NaOH plus H plus plus Cl minus, you are going to get Na plus plus Cl minus plus H2O. What happens here? The moment you dip the conductivity cell into the HCl solution, it shows the conductivity of HCl. HCl means it is present as H plus and Cl minus. Out of H plus and Cl minus, H plus ions are smaller in size. Being smaller in size, they are more mobile. Being more mobile, they are highly conductive. 
That's the reason when you dip the conductivity cell into the HCl solution in the beginning, you will be observing higher conductivity. Suppose let's say 18 Siemens per meter. Now what you are doing, you are adding 0.5 ml of NaOH into the beaker. The moment you add 0.5 ml of NaOH into the beaker, NaOH neutralizes some of the HCl. NaOH neutralizes some of the HCl into NaCl and H2O. So, NaOH neutralizes some of the HCl into NaCl and H2O. NaCl is present as Na plus and Cl minus along with the presence of H2O. Thereby what happened? When you add 0.5 ml of NaOH, some of the HCl or some of the H plus ions are neutralized. Thereby, there is a decrease in the concentration of H plus ions. When the number of H plus ions decreases, naturally conductivity also decreases. Therefore, in the beginning it may be around 18, then it may become 16, then another 0.5 ml you are adding NaOH. When you keep on adding 0.5 ml of NaOH each time, there will be a decrease in the concentration of H plus ions because more and more H plus ions get neutralized. Whenever there is a decrease in the concentration of H plus ions, there will be decrease in the conductivity naturally. So therefore, when you keep on adding NaOH each time 0.5 ml, you will be observing a rapid decrease in the conductivity like this. Therefore, you are going to get the points like this. If you plot a conductance versus volume of NaOH, conductance along the y axis, volume of NaOH along the x axis, you are going to get the graph like this, where you are going to get the points like this, highest conductivity in the beginning, right? Next point family adding, conductivity decreasing, 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 you are going to get this, you are going to get some points here like this. So, when you keep on adding NaOH each time, there will be decrease in the concentration of H plus ions, there is, therefore, there is a rapid decrease in the conductivity. Conductivity decreases, decreases and decreases, reaches a minimum. The minimum point of conductivity is where, where all the HCl is neutralized, where all the HCl is neutralized. Still you are continuing the addition of NaOH. When you add NaOH further, what happens for this NaOH, there is no H, HCl to react. Therefore, NaOH, when you add NaOH further, NaOH itself ionizes, NaOH itself ionizes forming Na plus and OH minus, Na plus and OH minus. So therefore, when you keep on adding NaOH 0.5 ml again and again and again, more and more hydroxyl ions are released and hydroxyl ions are also highly conductive in nature. Therefore, you will be observing again a drastic increase in the conductivity, drastic increase in the conductivity. So once you reach the uh, conductivity increases, increases and increases, and may go back to its original value, initial value, then you stop conducting the experiment. Then you plot a graph of conductance along the y axis, volume of NaOH along the x axis. You get a some, you get some points here, some more points here, draw a straight line to join these points, go for a straight line, you may miss one or two points, not a matter, go for straight line here and these two lines will intersect somewhere here. From the point of intersection, draw a perpendicular to x axis. Where it touches the x axis, it is nothing but volume of NaOH required to neutralize 50 ml of the HCl. Volume of NaOH required to neutralize 50 ml of the HCl solution. So, therefore, normality of HCl, normality of HCl is equal to normality of NaOH, right? Normality of NaOH, normality of NaOH into volume of NaOH, volume of NaOH, right, divided by normality, volume, divided by volume of HCl, volume of HCl, right. So, normality of NaOH is known to us because we take standard solution of NaOH and volume of NaOH is from the graph, right. This is the volume of NaOH required to neutralize 50 ml of the HCl, volume, volume of NaOH, volume of NaOH is going to be volume of NaOH, Volume of NaOH is going to be, volume of HCl is going to be 50, substitute the values, you are going to get normality of HCl, you are going to get normality of the HCl. Once you know the normality of HCl, weight of HCl per dm cube, weight of HCl per dm cube is equal to normality of HCl into its equivalent mass that is 
36.5 equivalent mass that is that is is it 36.5 is its equivalent mass thereby you can find out the normality of HCl as well as weight of HCl per dm cube weight of HCl per dm cube this is how conductometrically you can find out the volume of NaOH required to neutralize 50 ml of the HCl or 25 ml of the HCl how much ever you take by using that you can estimate HCl. So, this is how estimation of HCl can be done by using conductometric titration and therefore, this is one of the examples of conductometric titration of strong acid versus strong base. Next, next is the conductometric titration of weak acid with a strong base, weak acid versus strong base. So, here we take the example of conductometric titration of acetic acid against sodium hydroxide. Acetic acid is a weak acid, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. We take this example of acetic acid versus NaOH and uh, in this case what we do as usual fill the burette with NaOH and take 50 ml of acetic acid in a beaker and you dip the conductivity cell and you dip the conductivity cell. Okay. The moment you dip the conductivity cell, conductivity cell detects the specific conductance of acetic acid. And you know that acetic acid is a weak acid, being a weak acid it is also a weak electrolyte. Any weak electrolyte is one which dissociates partially, a weak electrolyte is one which dissociates partially that is acetic acid dissociates very partial, very partially and producing acetate ions along with the formation of H plus ions, along with the formation of H plus ions. So, but its dissociation is very, very less. Because its dissociation is very, very less, when you take acetic acid as a solution, it will be having only very few acetate ions and very few H plus ions. Because of the presence of very few acetate ions and very few H plus ions, overall conductance of the acetic acid is very, very lesser because the conductance of any solution is depending upon number of ions first, then mobility of the ions. But in the case of acetic acid solution, number of ions itself is very less because acetic acid is a weak electrolyte. Being a weak electrolyte, it undergoes only partial dissociation. So, therefore, when you take acetic acid in a beaker, dip the conductivity cell, what happens is the conductivity cell shows very low conductivity for acetic acid. It may be showing conductivity of around 6 Siemens per meter or 5 Siemens per meter whatever it is. Then what you are doing to that acetic acid you are going to add NaOH 0.5 ml each time. When you are adding NaOH what happens is NaOH reacts with acetic acid forming sodium acetate along with the formation of H2O. Sodium acetate along with the formation of H2O and sodium acetate is a salt right. And what kind of the salt it is? Sodium acetate is a salt of strong base and weak acid. Sodium acetate is a salt of strong base and weak acid. Being a salt of strong base and weak acid, it is a stronger electrolyte than acetic acid itself. It is a stronger electrolyte than acetic acid itself. Therefore, the point is being a stronger electrolyte than acetic acid, sodium acetate dissociates more than acetic acid. Whatever the extent to which acetic acid dissociates, sodium acetates dissociates more than that producing more number of ions. Suppose if you take 10 ml of acetic acid and 10 ml of sodium acetate, 10 ml of sodium acetate will be having more number of ions, more number of ions than 10 ml of acetic acid. So, here because sodium acetate is a stronger electrolyte than acetic acid. So, therefore, what happens? When you keep on adding sodium hydroxide into acetic acid taken in the beaker, more and more sodium acetate is being formed and sodium acetate is stronger than acetic acid. Therefore, it dissociates more and more forming more number of sodium ions and acetate ions. When more and more number of sodium ions and acetate ions are formed or when, in, when more and more number of ions are formed naturally, conductivity gradually increases. That is the reason you are observing a graph like this. When you, when you take acetic acid in the beginning, dip the conductivity cell, find out the conductance, it is very less. Then you keep on adding 0.5 ml of NaOH each time 
and stir the reaction mixture note down the conductance you will be observing a gradual increase in the conductivity 5 then it may become 6 then it may become 6.8 then it may become 7.9 like that you will be observing a gradual increase in the conductivity. So, once conductivity increases gradually reaching a point where all the acetic acid is neutralized. Once all the acetic acid is neutralized then further sodium hydroxide when you add further sodium hydroxide there is no acetic acid left out in the react beaker to react with. When there is no acetic acid left out as all of you know sodium hydroxide itself is a stronger electrolyte it itself ionizes it itself ionizes producing sodium ions producing sodium ions and hydroxyl ions sodium ions and hydroxyl ions and out of these two hydroxyl ions are highly conductive. Therefore, when you keep on adding 0.5 ml of sodium hydroxide after this point every time more and more hydroxyl ions are produced and more and more so hydroxyl ions are introduced into the reaction mixture more is the more is going to be the conductivity therefore, you are, you are going to observe a drastic increase in the conductivity. Conductivity increases, increases and increases take 6 to 7 readings here then stop conducting the experiment. Then you plot a graph of conductance along the y axis volume of NaOH along the x axis. Whenever you do so as I explained here conductivity is very less in the beginning then gradual increase, gradual increase, gradual increase, gradual increase, increase, increase then it starts increasing gra drastically right. Then you then you drive straight line in this direction straight line one more straight line in this direction these two lines intersect here and from the point of your intercept from the point of intersection draw a perpendicular to x axis where it touches the x axis it is nothing but the volume of NaOH required to neutralize 50 ml of acetic acid if you have taken 50. So, this is where this is how we are getting the amount of NaOH required to neutralize 50 ml or 30 ml or 25 ml how much ever the acetic acid you have taken. So, here the volume of NaOH required to neutralize that much of acetic acid you are getting here ok. So, once you get the volume as usual the normality of acetic acid normality of acetic acid is equal to normality of NaOH this is known to you right into volume of NaOH this is also this is you are getting from the graph and normality of sorry volume of acetic acid this is volume of acetic acid you are getting. Volume of acetic acid. So, normality of NaOH is known to us right we are using standard solution of NaOH and volume of NaOH is from the graph that you are obtaining uh, conductometrically then by plotting the graph then volume of acetic acid is known to us we have taken uh, 50 ml or 30 ml whatever it is then once you know the normality weight of acetic acid per dm cube weight of acetic acid weight of acetic acid per dm cube is equal to normality of acetic acid into its equivalent weight its equivalent weight its equivalent weight of acetic acid is 60 equivalent rate of acetic acid is 60 thereby you can exactly find out how much is the value or how much is the amount of acetic acid dissolved per liter of the solution thereby you are estimating acetic acid conductometrically by carrying out conductometric titration of acetic acid versus sodium hydroxide by carrying out conductometric titration of acetic acid against sodium hydroxide. So, this is an example of conductometric titration of weak acid with a strong base. So, we have discussed how to carry out conductometric titration of strong acid with a strong base here weak acid with a weak strong base. Now, we see how to carry out conductometric estimation of mixture of strong and weak acids with a strong base. How to carry out conductometric estimation of mixture of strong and weak acids with a strong base. So, what we do? We take the mixture of HCl and acetic acid against NaOH. We take the mixture of HCl and acetic acid and this mixture we titrate against NaOH 
conductometrically. We titrate against NaOH conductometrically. So, here what we do is, here what we do is, we take sodium hydroxide as usual in the burette, fill the sodium hydroxide in the burette or fill the burette with sodium hydroxide, then into a beaker pipette out 50 ml of the acid mixture, pipette out 50 ml of the acid mixture. Acid mixture is the mixture of what? HCl and acetic acid. Out of these two acids, HCl is a strong acid, acetic acid is a weak acid. Okay. Then what you do? You dip the conductivity cell into the acid mixture and find out the conductance of the acid mixture. It is shown in the conductivity meter in the digital form. Note down the value, note down the conductance of acid mixture. So, what how much conductance generally we may get? We are, are we going to get lower conductance value or higher conductance value? See here, in the, the beaker contains what? The beaker contains acid mixture. What acid mixture? Mixture of HCl and acetic acid. And out of these two acids, as all of you know, HCl is a strong acid and also a strong electrolyte. Acetic acid is a weak acid and also a weak electrolyte. So, therefore, uh, HCl being a strong electrolyte dissociates completely, whereas acetic acid is a weak electrolyte, being a weak electrolyte, it dissociates partially, that is number one. Another point is acetic acid is a weak electrolyte, it is present along with strong electrolyte. Whenever any weak electrolyte is present along with the strong electrolyte and both the electrolytes are having one common ion. For example, HCl is having H plus ion, acetic acid is also having H plus ion. In that case, the dissociation of weak electrolyte is suppressed further. This is what is called as common ion effect. What common ion effect says? The dissociation of a weak electrolyte is suppressed further in the presence of a strong electrolyte having common ion. So, therefore, here whenever we take 50 ml of acid mixture containing HCl and acetic acid, HCl is strong electrolyte, acetic acid is weak electrolyte, both of them contain H plus ion in common. As a result of that, dissociation of acetic acid is further suppressed. Basically, it is lesser because it is a weak electrolyte, but in the presence of HCl, its dissociation is further suppressed. So, therefore, in the acid mixture of HCl and acetic acid, we can ignore the dissociation of acetic acid. It is very, very lesser. Therefore, whereas HCl is completely dissociated and it is present as H plus and Cl minus ions. And out of these two, H plus ions are very smaller, being smaller, they are highly mobile, being highly mobile, highly conductive. Therefore, the acid mixture when we take, dip the conductivity cell, the conductance of the acid mixture in the beginning is only due to the conductance of H plus ions of HCl. And H plus ions of HCl generally show high conductivity, therefore you are going to get high conductivity of around 16 or 17 or 18 Siemens per meter. You can note it down. So, you take acid mixture in a beaker, 50 ml acid mixture in a beaker, fill the burette with NaOH into the acid mixture, you dip the conductivity cell, immediately conductivity cell detects the conductance of the acid mixture, shows in the digital form in the digital window, display window of the conductivity meter and it shows higher conductivity. This is because the out of acid mixture only HCl is mainly responsible for the conductivity, H plus ions of HCl are responsible for the conductivity in the beginning because of common ion effect. So, therefore, it shows higher conductivity, note down the conductivity value, conductance value. Then you keep on adding 0.5 ml of NaOH each time. When you add NaOH, what happens is the same thing we observed already, whatever we observed here, when we add NaOH in the beginning, NaOH reacts with HCl, thereby neutralizing H plus ions of HCl each time, whenever number of H plus ions gradually decreases, conductance, uh, number of H plus ions decreases, conductance decreases rapidly. The same thing we observe here also, because in the beginning, 
acid mixture contains H plus ions of HCl, H plus and Cl minus ions of HCl only, acetic acid is almost remained, almost remained undissociated we can say. Therefore, when you add NaOH in the beginning, NaOH reacts with HCl, NaOH reacts with HCl forming NaCl and H2O, NaCl and H2O. So, thereby when you keep on adding NaOH each time, number of H plus ions of HCl gradually or drastically decreases. Thereby, every time when you keep on adding NaOH, you will be observing a drastic decrease in the conductivity. 18 may become 16, 16 may become 13.5, 13.5 may become 10, 10 may become 9.5, 8.5, then it may become 5, 6, 4, etc. So, therefore, in the beginning, when you keep on adding 0.5 ml of NaOH each time, conductivity decreases, decreases and decreases, reaches a minimum where all HCl is neutralized, where all HCl is neutralized. But you are not stopping the addition of NaOH, you are continuing the addition of NaOH. When you add NaOH further, HCl is already reacted, right, HCl is over, then who is left out in the beaker, in the reaction mixture? Acetic acid is left out. Therefore, when you add NaOH, then NaOH start reacting with acetic acid forming, con uh, converting acetic acid into sodium acetate. So, what we have observed here the same thing happens that is NaOH reacts with acetic acid forming sodium acetate. Sodium acetate is a stronger electrolyte than acetic acid because sodium acetate is a salt of strong base and weak acid. Being so, sodium acetate is a stronger electrolyte than acetic acid. Therefore, sodium acetate can ionize more vigorously than acetic acid. Sodium acetate can ionize to a greater extent than that of acetic acid. As a result of that, when you add NaOH each time, so more and more acetic acid becomes sodium acetate. More and more sodium acetate means more and more sodium, uh, sodium and acetate ions. More and more ions means more and more conductivity. That is the reason after this point where all the HCl is neutralized, you still continuing the addition of NaOH. NaOH leads to the formation of more and more sodium acetate, more and more sodium acetate, more and more ions, more conductivity. Therefore, you are observing a gradual increase in the conductivity. You are observing a gradual increase in the conductivity, reaching one more point, reaching one more point where all the acetic acid is neutralized, where all the acetic acid is over. Still you are adding NaOH. When you add NaOH further from this point onwards, there is no HCl to react with NaOH. There is no acetic acid. Both of them are reacted completely, right? There is nobody to react with NaOH. But all of us know that NaOH is also a strong electrolyte. Therefore, at the end when you add NaOH, keep on adding NaOH at the end, NaOH itself dissociates producing Na plus ions and OH minus ions, Na plus ions and OH minus ions. Out of Na plus and OH minus ions, hydroxyl ions are again highly conductive. Therefore, you will be observing a drastic increase in the conductivity upon the addition of 0.5 ml of NaOH each time, reaching almost reaching or crossing the initial value. Once it reaches or crosses the initial value, you can stop conducting the titration. Clear? No. So, this is how, this is how whenever you carry out a conductometric titration of acid mixture of strong acid and weak acid against strong base NaOH, you are going to get these kinds of the changes where you will be observing a drastic decrease in the conductivity in the beginning then gradual increase, then again drastic increase towards the end, drastic increase towards the end. Once the conductance value reaches back the initial value or crosses the initial value, then you can stop doing the titration. Then you plot a graph of conductance along the y axis and volume of NaOH along the x axis. Whenever you do so, what happens? You will be getting higher conductivity, decreases, decreases, decreases right in the beginning therefore, you will be getting some points like this and then conductivity gradually increases therefore, you are going to get some points here. Then you are getting then conductivity drastically increases you are getting some more points here. 
you plot a straight line, you draw a straight line in this direction, you draw one more straight line in this direction, right? And here also some points are there, right? Because of gradual increase in conductivity, draw, a, draw one more straight line at the center, the central line intersects these two lines. The central line intersects these two lines. From the first intersection, draw a perpendicular to x axis. Where it touches the x axis, call it as V1 Cm cube. And from the second intersection, draw a perpendicular to x axis, where it touches the x axis, call it, call it as V2 Cm cube. The first intersection call it as V1 Cm cube, second intersection call it as V2 Cm cube. What is this V1 Cm cube? V1 Cm cube is nothing but the volume of NaOH required to neutralize HCl only. 0 to V2, 0 to V2 is the volume of NaOH required to neutralize both HCl and acetic acid, whereas V2 minus V1 will give you the volume of NaOH required to neutralize only acetic acid. So, therefore, from by plotting the graph after conducting the titration, after conducting the experiment, then by plotting the graph, you are going to get the volume of NaOH, volume of standard solution of NaOH required to neutralize only HCl and also required to neutralize only acetic acid. V1 Cm cube is nothing but the volume of NaOH required to neutralize only HCl. V2 minus V1 Cm cube is the volume of NaOH required to neutralize only acetic acid. Clear? No, only acetic acid. Once you, once you get those points, let us say normality of NaOH, let it be 0 0.1 normal. We can use 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 normal also. Let it be 0 0.1 normal. Volume of NaOH required to neutralize only HCl is V1 Cm cube. As I already told you from the graph, we are getting from it from the graph. Volume of NaOH required to neutralize both HCl and acetic acid is how much? V2 Cm cube that also we discussed and therefore volume of NaOH required to neutralize only acetic acid is V2 minus V1 Cm cube. This is how you note down the points, you note down the data. Whereas in the earlier two cases, we got only one point volume of NaOH required to neutralize only HCl in the strong acid versus strong base. Similarly, another uh, case volume of NaOH required to neutralize acetic acid, weak acid, there is also only one point that is weak acid versus strong base case. Here is the mixture of acids versus strong base. Therefore, we have to note down, we have to find out and we found out also that is volume of NaOH required to neutralize only acetic acid, volume of NaOH required to neutralize only HCl and volume of NaOH required to neutralize both acid, both HCl and acetic acid. Once you note down these values, using the normal standard formula, normality of HCl is equal to normality of acidic NaOH into volume of NaOH divided by 50. Let us call it A. Okay. Let us call it as A. Normality of NaOH is 0 0.1. Volume of NaOH is nothing but V1, right? V1, volume of HCl, volume of acid mixture is taken as 50 ml. Therefore, it is 50 for both and let us take it as, let us call it as A. Therefore, weight of HCl per dm cube is equal to normality of HCl that is A into equivalent weight of HCl that is 36.5. Therefore, weight of HCl per dm cube is equal to A into 36.5, A into 36.5. Okay. Similarly, normality of acetic acid is equal to normality of NaOH into volume of NaOH by 50. Normality of NaOH is 0.1. Volume of NaOH is V2 minus V1, right? V2 minus V1 is for acetic acid divided by 50. Let us call it as B. Therefore, the weight of acetic acid per dm cube is equal to normality of acetic acid into equivalent weight of acetic acid. Normality of acetic acid, we taken it as B into equivalent weight of acetic acid is 60. By using that, we can calculate the weight of acetic acid per dm cube. So, this is how even when the mixture of strong acids and strong, strong and weak acids are given to you, you will be able to find out the normality of both the acids and we are also able to find out the uh, weight of each acid in per dm cube of the solution. So, this is how conductometric titration can be used in the case of strong acid versus strong base weak acid versus strong base and mixture of strong acids and weak acid versus strong base. Whenever you carry out the conductivity titration of strong acid versus strong base, 
you are going to get a V-shaped curve like this. Why it is so we understood. And when you carry out a conductometric estimation of titration of weak acid versus strong base, you are going to get a graph like this. Gradual increase, then rapid increase. Whereas strong acid versus strong base, rapid decrease, then rapid increase. Whereas in the case of weak acid versus strong base, gradual increase in conductance, then rapid increase. We understood why it is so. Then in the case of the mixture of strong and weak acids against strong base, we are going to get a graph like this, where there is a rapid decrease, then gradual increase, then rapid increase. So, these are the three different situations we can uh, use conductometric estimation, the two in the case of acid base titrations. So, this is how whether it is strong acid versus strong base or weak acid versus strong base and mixture of strong acid and weak acid versus strong base, we can do the conductometric titration, we can find out the result accurately with the help of the graph finally. So, therefore, in this session, we try to understand what is conductometric titration what is the what is specific conductance what is the theory what kind of what is the theory behind the conductometric titration what kind of instrument we use in carrying out conductometric titration and applications of conductometric titration we understood and up under conductometric titration we we discussed about acid based titrations in three different cases one is strong acid versus strong base weak acid versus strong base and mixture of strong and weak acids with a strong base. So, these are the few things thereby we have a fair idea about what is conductometric titration, what is specific conductance, what are all the factors upon which conductance of a solution is dependent, how that instrument works, how that instrument works, what is conductivity cell, how it works, those things we understood and finally, we took three different cases to understand the applicability of conductometry titration in three different cases thereby we got a fair idea about how conductometry titration can be used and it can be advantageous. Thank you.